Good afternoon. I would like to welcome everyone to the Douglas Laboratories Educational Webinar Series. My name is Shelley Johnson. I'm a registered dietitian and Douglas Laboratories Territory Representative for the Greater Houston Area. Today's topic is titled, Women's Health and Dye and Methane. Is it essential? Presented by Dr. Shalina Lodge. Dr. Lodge will be happy to answer any questions at the end of the webinar, so please submit your questions at any time by using the Go Tool Go to toolbar. Dr. Shalina Wise, known as Dr. Shell by her patients and colleagues, is the founder and medical director of the Dr. Shell Wellness and Medical Spa in Sugarland, Texas. She has been inspiring and educating people on how to live their best lives possible and balance and harmony for well over 15 years. An graduate of Emory University School of Medicine, she is a board certified obstetrician and gynecologist. After practicing traditional women's health care for over 13 years, she felt the need to focus on a comprehensive approach to women's health, focusing on the balance between the mind, body, and spirit. This journey inspired her to establish the Dr. Shell Wellness and Medical Spa in 2006. Dr. Shell is currently publishing her first book to educate women of all ages about reclaiming their happiness, health, and harmony. She believes in and lives by a strong balance in life herself while enjoying embracing her many roles as a physician, a woman's advocate, an educator, an entrepreneur, a wife, and a mother of two beautiful children. Dr. Shell, it is a pleasure to have you with us today, and we look forward to your presentation. With that said, I will now turn it over to you. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for that kind introduction. Today we're going to be speaking about um, dyndal methane, or DIM. And, uh, we came up with this catchy title, Dim Days in Distress, because a lot of our patients tend to be in distress when they come in and we like to balance their uh, mind, body, and spirit. So with that being said, um, what I'd like to do is um, start talking about um, a little bit of background, which Shelley already covered, um, but I'm a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist, and I've been doing a practice in um, total wellness um, for the last seven years, and um, it, uh, it has allowed me the ability to really um, offer more inner and outer wellness for my patients, which I think allows them to live a healthier life um, and more fulfilled life. Um, some other companies that I speak for, just to kind of um, get um, <clears throat> that out there. Um, so essentially, a transition that I made from traditional OB-GYN to integrative medicine was for many reasons, and uh, I was starting to see a lot of patients who were only being treated based upon their symptoms and their causes of their symptoms were never looked at. So I wanted to provide, like I'm sure a lot of you do, um, ways or options to treat the causes of declining health and not just the overriding symptoms of those. I'm sure most of you uh, would like to practice medicine your way with the patient's best interest in mind rather than the insurance companies, and that was another reason why I chose to practice integrative medicine. So a lot of the different services that we offer in our um, center um, go with the mind-body-spirit balancing, and uh, some of them are hormone testing and bioidentical hormone replacement for both men and women, digestive health treatments, nutritional testing, food sensitivity testing, environmental allergy testing. We also do some neurotransmitter testing, as well as some detoxification programs and weight loss treatment. Uh, we offer different services, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with, including medical grade supplementation, Myers or other nutritional cocktails, vitamin C therapy, B12 injections, sauna, detox, and glutathione, and several other wellness-related um, pro programs. Um, so we really have come up with an eight steps to optimal wellness over the years, and um, those eight steps really allow us to help our patients stay very balanced as well as lead a very um, balanced life, and that includes a lot of the things that I've mentioned earlier as well. So today our objectives are going to be to really review the science of dye and dope methane. I'd like to also help everybody understand that there is a big difference between indole-3-carbonyl and bioresponse DIM. Um, also, to be able to explain the many, many health benefits that um, DIM has for women, especially, and uh, then I'll be sharing some of the case studies 
um, from my own practice where I've utilized formulated them. And then, of course, we'll leave some time for questions at the end as well. So we'll be talking about the origins, the history, and the science of them. So let's first talk about what indole-3-carbonyl, or as we also call it, I3C is. So I3C is an intermediate, it's a phytochemical intermediate in cruciferous vegetables. The bad part about I3C is, is that it's very unstable and it's reactive. So there's a potential that it could transform into many possible harmful non-DIM substances. And uh, these substances have had variable absorption with a portion of it also remaining in the GI tract, which you don't want. So the activity is unpredictable, and especially when you compare it to DIM, it really has much more unpredictable activity. If you look at the chemical molecular structure um, of the I3C and DIM, when you look at the I3C, as you can see, it's, the structure is quite different from the structure of DIM. And uh, that, of course, um, explains why the activity is different as well. Diendylmethane, on the other hand, or DIM as we better know it, is a natural antioxidant and phytonutrient also found in cruciferous vegetables. The great thing is it's stable, it's non-reactive, it is a metabolite, as you saw in the drawing earlier, of indole-3 carbonyl, but it has a very specific and more limited effect on estrogen. And you want more limited and specific effects because you don't want the negative. You only want the positive. So DIM by itself, though, is, it is an indole which is highly insoluble by itself. And for it to be absorbed optimally, pure DIM must be microencapsulated, which is what Douglas has been able to do, is come up with a microencapsulated um, DIM and provide that to us as practitioners because that provides significant increase in the GI absorption of this product. Now, we do know that DIM is the most active plant indole, and it promotes positive estrogen metabolism. And I'll go into the estrogen metabolism in just a few slides, but it's important to realize that the met metabolic enzymes for DIM are similar to hormone balancing enzymes, which actually occur naturally in our bodies. So we want to replicate those naturally occurring balancing enzymes. We've uh, been using DIM for the last 10 years, over 10 years, to maintain healthy hormonal balance. And uh, we've been able to just refine that and make it better and better over the years because we um, do know that it was discovered to be a natural alternative for breast health. It is now under study for even cancer risk reduction at this point. So the main points about I3C or indole-3-carbonyl that I'd like to stress again is that one, it is highly unstable, two, it has unpredictable activity, and three, it has no activity until it's converted to DIM by the stomach acid. When you compare that to DIM, we know that it's extremely stable. It promotes good estrogen, and it decreases bad estrogen, and we'll again go over that. And there's no conversion necessary for it to be beneficial. So you've already got the end product there, which is important. So we do know, like I mentioned earlier, that DIM, the natural sources of DIM are the cruciferous vegetables, including your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower. Those are all very important cruciferous vegetables and uh, really are very um, good for promoting health. Now, plain I3C, like I mentioned earlier, is proven to be highly unstable. But even DIM, even though it promotes only good estrogen, it needs to be microencapsulated to be able to be absorbed into the body. So if you look at how much of the cruciferous vegetables you'd need to eat to be able to have as much as a 75 milligram capsule of microencapsulated DIM, we'd have to eat one pound of broccoli each day to get as much DIM as that. And when I mentioned that to my patients, they're very glad to go ahead and take their one capsule of DIM a day. So what is microencapsulated DIM? Well, we know that methane is a crystalline solid. It lacks solubility in water, also in the gastric acids, and neutral solutions unless it is microencapsulated. So the microencapsulated DIM, it is patented. It has enhanced bioavailability complex, 
which it is combined with starch, diendolmethane, vitamin D, as well as soy, phosphatidylcholine, and silica. And that allows it to have the absorption that we need it to have. So let's now talk about estrogen metabolism. And why is that important? Well, there are three types of estrogen metabolites that we all should know about. The first one is the two hydroxyestrogens. These are what I call the quote-unquote good estrogens with the favorable outcome. Then we have the 16 hydroxyestrogens that have the unfavorable outcome. These ones are connected with breast cancer as well as autoimmune diseases. We then have four hydroxyestrogens which also have unfavorable outcomes and they have a connection with a subclass of cytochrome or the CYP enzyme. The increased production of these has been associated with lung, colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer. So the 16 and the 4 are the two that have unfavorable outcomes, and the 2-hydroxy estrogens have the favorable outcomes. And that's what I was referring to when I talked about the good estrogens versus the bad estrogen metabolites. So if you look at what the main metab metabolite functions of DIM are, you look at DIM and what does it do? It increases the 2-hydroxyestrogen, it increases the 2-methoxyestrogen, and it decreases the 4 and the 16-hydroxyestrogen, which is where the key is because we want the ratio of the 2-hydroxy over the 4, four and 16-hydroxy to be higher, <clears throat> and that's what DIM allows us to do. So if you look at this diagram, it kind of simplifies things for you even further. You see the estradiol um, and the estrone on the left side of the page. If you look at the estradiol, how it converts into the metabolite of the 2-hydroxy estradiol, that is protective, as is the 2-hydroxy estrone. We can then take that further and go into the 2-methoxy estradiol and the 2-methoxy estrone. One of them is anti-proliferative, the other one is protective. So we have good um, metabolites there which are going to be more protective. Now if you look a little bit further below, you'll see the estrone can uh, metabolize into 16-hydroxyestrone and 4-hydroxyestrone. Both of those have been shown to have carcinogenic um, chemical uh, properties. So you really don't want those unfavorable outcomes. So what does DIM do? DIM actually increases your 2-methoxy estradiol as well as the 2-hydroxy, and it decreases the 4 and the 16, and those are the um, roles that we are really in favor of as far as the DIM and the effects of DIM goes. So again, if you look at the three types of estrogen metabolites and the different ratios, what you really want is you want a safer estrogen metabolism so that you can have more of the good estrogens, which is the 2-hydroxy and the microencapsulated DIM is going to allow us to have that. And we want the 4-hydroxy and the 16-hydroxy estrogens to be decreased, which is what happens with the microencapsulated DIM. It actually decreases the 4 and the 16. In fact, microencapsulated DIM at 100 milligrams per day has been shown to increase the 2-hydroxy over the 16-hydroxy ratio by up to 40%, which is a pretty huge increase in the ratio and therefore the favorable outcomes of the 2-hydroxy. So when you look at this graph, if you look at generic DIM, which is not microencapsulated, and you look at the bioresponse DIM at um, 75 milligrams of DIM and 300 milligrams uh, total, if you look at the DIM concentration in the urine based on nanograms per milliliter and you start at zero hours of taking in this DIM and you go up to about 10 hours, you can see the amount of concentration that you see in the urine because of the absorption level. So again, this is to, in, uh, in, uh, to really stress that microencapsulated DIM provides superior absorption over just the generic DIM. So all DIMs are not made equal. They have to be microencapsulated in the special formula to achieve the absorption that you need. So if you actually take baseline urine samples, 
from healthy adults, which was done in the study that is demonstrated here, and it was um, published. Um, the subjects from the first group took generic DIM at 300 milligrams once daily for one week, and they provided a second urine sample as well. When you looked at the two urine samples, and they were tested for both two as well as 16 hydroxy estrums, both before and after ratios were compared. When they looked at the 300 milligrams per day of generic DIM, it had no effect on the 2 over 16 ratio. However, in the group taking just 100 milligrams per day of the bioresponse DIM, an increase in the 2 16 ratio is demonstrated starting at the 100 milligrams per day of the bioresponse DIM. So again, it's very important for the absorption to occur for the absolute positive impact of the DIM to occur. So that's where the bioresponse DIM becomes extremely important, because if you don't see it in the urine uh, sam samples, then you, of course, don't have the absorption. Now the other thing is we need to um, really be looking at what dose is really important. And so they've done a comparison where they've looked at the crystalline DIM at 300 milligrams. And when they compare that to women taking bioresponse DIM, whether it's 100 milligrams, 150, 300, and then again 300, where you're actually looking at 25 milligrams of the bioresponse DIM up to the 75 milligrams, you're actually seeing an intense change um, and a very vast difference in the percent change in the 2 over 16 ratio. The biggest change that you see, of course, as you can look on the graph, is at the 75 milligrams of the bioresponse DIM, where you see a very um, large change and increase in the 2 16 ratio. You also see this change in men as well. And even in men, um, this is beyond the scope of this discussion, but I do use them quite a bit in my male patients. Now next we have, um, we want to make sure that just, you know, you want to get the bioresponse them in and have the 2-hydroxyestrogen levels go up, but you also want it to remain High. So if you look at the meta metabolite concentrations over time, you actually see that the 2-hydroxy concentrations remain high um, in the timed urine samples following a single dose of bioresponse DIM providing 75 milligrams of actual DIM. So you actually see that those um, ratios stay elevated in favor of 2-hydroxy. So now, with this addition um, of the cruciferous phytochemicals to the diet, we know that we're shifting the metabolism of estrogen towards the good estrogens or the 2-hydroxy, which is great because it provides antioxidant properties. And that's very important because these antioxidant properties is what's going to eliminate cancerous cells. These properties or these metabolites actually function as antioxidants and thus have the power to eliminate the damaged or the cancerous cells throughout our body. This is why we actually say that DIM has cancer prevention activities. Um, and the lack of phytochemicals actually increase bad estrogens, which is your 4 and the 16 hydroxy, which results in oxidation, it results in DNA damage, and it results in cancer. So you do want to stress and emphasize to your patients that we are uh, moving towards cancer prevention with the DIM because we're changing the estrogen metabolism. So let's kind of talk about from a clinical perspective, that's a lot of the science and the origin of DIM. But from a clinical perspective, what are the main roles of DIM in our practice that we can take away from this presentation and perhaps incorporate into our practices? And why is the increasing of the good estrogen metabolites important in our practice? Well, there are many reasons. Number one, it provides antioxidant properties. Number two, it provides anti-cancer activities which is very important to most of our patients that walk into our practices, I'm sure. It supports a healthy heart, circulatory system. It reduces estrogen dominance symptoms, which if you have a lot of female patients in your practice, I'm sure you see that quite a bit, where you see a lot of symptoms of estrogen dominance, and we'll go over that in a little while, as well as it eliminates cells with poor function, which you really want to try to have those antioxidant properties, removing those cells with poor function so that we can have a healthier um, body. So if we were to summarize what are some of the health benefits of DIM and then go into each of them in detail, we, for women overall, 
we have overall health benefits including reduction in cancer risk status, improved breast health, better endometrial lining health, weight loss, which is very important. I see that all the time in my practice, as I'm sure you do as well, improving the fat metabolism, as well as increasing lean muscle mass in our bodies, and that goes for men as well as women, promoting healthy aging. We can also reduce inflammation, and we can provide antioxidant properties with VDIM, and we can eliminate unhealthy cells from our patients' bodies, as well as reduce estrogen dominant symptoms, which is the cause of a lot of symptoms that the patients are actually coming in for. So these are many, many health benefits for women that we can um, emphasize to our female patients when they come into our practices. And uh, in this diagram, I've just kind of outlined those where the things that I see a lot in my practice are the weight loss, healthy aging, breast cancer prevention, other cancer prevention, improved breast pain, breast health, as well as estrogen dominant uh, related symptoms. So let's first start talking about why and how DIM affects estrogen dominance. Now a lot of you already know what some of the main symptoms of estrogen dominance are, but let's review that real quick. So we have estrogen dominance or hormonal imbalance that can cause uh, midlife obesity, it can cause weight gain, it can cause dysmenorrhea, which is painful periods, or menorrhagia, which is heavy periods, it can cause premenstrual um, symptoms, mood swings, anxiety, cause breast tenderness, breast pain, as well as breast swelling, sleep disturbances, brain fog, a lot of uh, mental um, non-clarity, endometriosis, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts that a lot of people end up having surgeries for that hopefully we can help them prevent. Uh, migraines, which may be menstrual-related migraines or cycle-related migraines or just headaches in general. So there are many, many things that are caused by an estrogen dominant picture in a lot of our female patients that we can certainly help them with the use of DIM and some other products. So when you look at estrogen production in a perimenopausal woman, you can see by looking at this graph that the older women actually have a lot more daily estrone in the urine. The older women develop this estrogen dominance, which is really associated with progesterone deficit. So a lot of the patients in my practice, especially 30s and beyond, are on natural progesterone as well as DIM because you want to have favorable outcomes as far as your estrogen metabolites, but also they are deficient in progesterone, so their balance between estrogen and progesterone are definitely off in this age group, especially in the perimenopausal women. So if you look at some of the benefits that we can offer to our patients, with a healthy hormonal level that we can offer them. It gives them an improved cognitive function. They have much more mental clarity. The brain fog just lifts up. It can help them promote healthy bones, uh, prevent osteoporosis and osteopenia, prevent um, or give them a healthy uh, brain, preventing Alzheimer's disease, preventing um, heart disease, improving their muscle mass, improving their metabolism. We can also support their energy. We can increase their libido, which you oftentimes see with these women in their 40s, 50s, and beyond. Um, also, mood elevations can be caused by DIM because of the um, balance between the estrogen and progesterone. It also gives them anti-aging ability, gives them useful skin, so that you can support the collagen production. So again, this is where you get into the inner and outer wellness for your patients, where you're giving them both inside and outside um, help for leading a healthy life. So let's look over why and how does them improve estrogen dominant symptoms. So what it does, is it stimulates more efficient estrogen metabolism. As we've already learned, it promotes 2-hydroxy estrogen. And um, by doing this, what it does is it's breaking down estrogen into the good estrogen metabolite. So it's also stimulating the AMPK, which is the cancer prevention. 
as well as it's reducing bad estrogen metabolites like we discussed earlier. So it's reducing your 16-hydroxy and 4-hydroxy estrogens, which we know have adverse effects as far as estrogen dominance goes. And actually, some studies have shown, like I've mentioned earlier, that these two metabolites can cause some cancers. So we definitely want to reduce those two metabolites and increase the ratio towards the 2-hydroxy estrogen. So what it's um, also doing is it's helping the female reproductive issues that are associated with estrogen dominance, such as the endometriosis, which a lot of patients might come into your practice with pelvic pain, with infertility, with um, dysmenorrhea, as well as um, they might have some endometriosis even in the colon, so they might have some GI issues. They might also come into your practice with uterine fibroids, for which they might be considering surgery or they're dealing with menorrhagia or, again, pelvic pain. And um, so you can actually help them with those, as well as ovarian cysts, which we know by looking at some studies that the chances of ovarian cysts increase as 4-hydroxy and 16-hydroxy estrogens are high. And um, the chances decrease when the 2-hydroxy estrogen is high. So again, if you don't control the ovarian cysts, um, then it can negatively impact fertility, which a lot of which we know that is rising in our society and our community today. So again, we can positively impact our patients by changing around these ratios and decreasing their issues with estrogen dominance. DIM also, like I mentioned earlier, supports that healthy estrogen level and reduces the chance of developing the endometriosis, fibroids, and cysts. So for a lot of female health issues, whether you're a primary care physician, uh, provide another kind of a provider, or an OBGYN, it really is going to help your patients with those issues of estrogen dominance. So next, let's go on to weight loss, which is something that a lot of us see patients for in our practices, and how does them affect weight loss? So we all know about metabolic syndrome. We all know that it is a constellation or a congregation of abnormal ranges of blood glucose, blood lipids, blood pressure, and body weight. And we do know that it's a rising epidemic, and we see this all over and all around us and many patients coming into our office for this. So we also know that um, inflammation is what leads to insulin resistance and weight gain. We know that inflammation plays a big role in patients eventually getting insulin resistance and having weight gain. So we want to get to the core of the problem, which is this inflammation. Now, the cycle of inflammation is caused by many different things. It's caused by a lack of exercise, by high glycemic index foods, which would be your sugars, your trans fats, your starches. It's also caused by environmental pollutants, which is all around us, whether we like it or not. And as organic as we might try to live, we have all of this around us in our office spaces or in our homes, whether it be pesticides, tobacco, hydrocarbons, petrochemicals. And so that is a big cause for inflammation, as well as increase in PCBs, which significantly, it is significantly associated with high glucose and high waist circumference. So we know that all of those things increase the cycle of inflammation. We should also note that macrophages play a very important role in pro-inflammatory hormones and the cytokines. So as macrophages increase, and if they're in excess, it promotes inflammation and promotes the metabolic syndrome. So what we want to be looking at is how do we decrease this inflammation, because if we do, we can decrease the insulin resistance, decrease metabolic syndrome, and thus decrease weight not just decrease it once, but keep it off, because we are actually reducing the incidence of the syndromes and the resistance. So with that being said, the DIM, what it does is it specifically inhibits the production and the release of inflammation-promoting cytokines, which come from macrophages. And when it does this, it promotes fat burning through estrogen metabolism and by increasing metabolism of the poorly soluble the pro-inflammatory chemical. And microencapsulated DIM also has specific activity which modulates inflammatory receptors and mediators. So when you do all this, this decreases the symptoms of the met metabolic syndrome 
and that includes your imbalanced blood sugar as well as the body weight. Now the other thing that we do is we combine the DIM with green tea taken orally each day to decrease appetite, decrease cravings, and boost the metabolism further. And actually in um, Douglas's DIM product, they actually include the green tea in their product so that it can help with weight loss in these ways as well. So that's how we deal with um, weight loss. And this is one of the ways, or many of the ways, that DIM actually affects positively weight loss for our patients. Next, let's discuss DIM and healthy aging. So a lot of your patients will be coming in for overall healthy aging and want to be on what you would recommend for healthy aging in their lifestyle. So DIM has, as we know, a natural antioxidant property. And that is really important for overall healthy aging because the more antioxidants you take in, the better you're going to be protecting yourself against chronic diseases. It also restores hormonal balance to slow the aging process. And as most of you know, if you've been in the um, field of uh, hormones, that it's very important to, um, to protect yourself that way. Um, reducing inflammation is very important. And what it does is it actually decreases disease state and helps resolve the metabolic syndrome. The um, important thing is we should also try to combine them with other beneficial antioxidants to boost the protective proteins on a more cellular level. The ones that I recommend would be glutathione. It's a very powerful antioxidant. Selenium, the core vitamins of E, A, and C. Curcumin, which um, very um, conveniently has been added to the Douglas products as well. They add a curcumin called Mariba curcumin, which uh, is very well absorbed. And that's added in the um, Douglas product and resveratrol, which a lot of my patients are on as well. So those are wonderful antioxidants which have great properties for healthy aging that your patients would benefit from long term. Okay. And the other thing that really helps is when you have two hydroxyestrogen metabolites, it actually helps to support program cell death. And this is a very important point because we saw some of the other things that 2-hydroxyestrogen metabolites do as far as the positive impact. But to support program cell death is very important because that will decrease inflammation and that will decrease also the chances for cancer. Um, it minimizes pro-inflammatory enzymes, which we talked about a little bit earlier when we were talking about inflammation. And it supports antioxidant cell enzymes, which promotes healthy cells. So this is all related to healthy aging. We, um, most of us know that damaged and inflamed cells are eliminated through a natural process. And that natural process is actually triggered by two hydroxyestrogen signals. And that's very important because that essentially leads to us maintaining in our bodies only healthy cells. It also leads to decreasing cancers and type 2 diabetes. It leads to reducing inflammation, reducing disease, and to complete health. So it's actually promoting complete health by doing all of these things that I just mentioned. Let's talk about DIM and breast health, because I know a lot of our patients do come in for those issues as well. Um, or other patients might have other issues but, um, but may be interested in breast health. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, when you look at the a low 2-hydroxy over 16-hydroxy urinary estrone ratio, it actually has been shown to predict future breast cancer in young women. So we really want to know that we need to stay away from a low ratio. We want a higher ratio of the 2-hydroxy over 16-hydroxy. Uh, we've also read in studies that recurrent breast pain is associated with an increased risk of future breast cancer. So we need to find a way to perhaps use microencapsulated DIM. And there are many studies underway that are using microencapsulated DIM with uh, women with breast cancer who are on tamoxifen to produce or promote, excuse me, breast health. So if you look at this um, slide, you're actually seeing that um, the cooler temperatures, if you look at the cooler temperatures, um, the purples and the um, um, blues, et cetera, they actually correspond to an improvement in symptoms. Now, the cooler breast tissue, um, if you look at that on the right, is after six months of microencapsulated DIM on the same patient. 
So this is through the use of thermography. So if you look at this particular area in both breasts, you see a lot of warmer temperatures in the left slide and a lot of cooler temperatures in the right corresponding with improvement of symptoms. And this, again, is after six months of the microencapsulated dip. Okay. And if you look at the um, graph here, you're actually seeing that absorbable DIM increases the 2 over 16 estron ratio in breast cancer survivors. So you've got the patients on placebo, which is in the purple, and the absorbable DIM, which is in the green, and you see a very vast difference in the ratio of the 2 over 16 um, hydroxy estrogens on the um, absorbable DIM as well as a reduction in the level of the estrone. So these are very positive um, results here that you're seeing that affect the breast um, directly. As far as dosaging for women, a lot of clinicians have asked me in the past, what do I normally use? Um, an average person, about 100 to 200 is what's recommended with food. The premenopausal women will need a higher dose because of the estrogen dominance. And so the recommendation is between 150 to 300 milligrams and a postmenopausal woman, 75 to 100 milligrams. I also recommend to my patients to definitely combine this DIM with other cruciferous vegetables as well in the diet just because the more the better as far as um, cruciferous vegetables as well as DIM for optimal results. So that was an overview of clinically how DIM affects the many different areas of health for um, my patients currently as well as for your patients and your patient population, but the different areas of benefits that, um, that DIM can affect and help it. So now let's look at some case studies that um, we have um, from my own patients in my practice, and I'll go over a few of them and then I'll open it up for questions. So here was a 38-year-old female that came in with many different symptoms. Some of them were fatigue, stress, depression, and low libido. Most of her symptoms, um, this individual just wrote off as part of life until um, somebody recommended that she come in and get them taken care of. She had been on antidepressants for many years since her children were born and just felt that that was going to be something she'd have to take for the rest of her life. So she underwent some treatments some testing with our um, practice, and I tested her for her thyroid profile. We did a saliva hormone testing on her, as well as tested her salivary diurnal cortisol levels, um, checked her routine lab work, as well as did some micronutrient testing to see what her nutritional deficiencies were. Her results indicated that she definitely had hormonal imbalance, where she was very estrogen dominant. Um, she had elevated cortisol because of a lot of stress that she had undergone, and uh, she was producing a, a large amount of cortisol in her saliva. Um, when we looked at it at the four different times during the day, her thyroid was also low in the suboptimal range. So we started a treatment plan where I um, prescribed some bioidentical progesterone replacement for her, as well as some uh, thyroid, armor thyroid and a few different supplements, including the microencapsulated DIM. And I uh, gave her some adrenal extract, put her on an adrenal rebuilding program with stress relaxation, as well as meditation and yoga and other things, thyroid support supplements, as well as a um, very healthy and balanced diet, and uh, supported her with some of the nutritional supplements that uh, were deemed to be um, deficient in her according to the micronutrient testing. So her outcome after doing all of this was that she was able to lose weight, her energy improved, her fatigue was reduced, her libido improved, her moods improved, and after about um, six weeks of treatment, she was able to start tapering off her antidepressants, which was um, a very welcome change for her because she thought that she was never going to be able to come off of those. So this really helped us to balance her estrogen dominance, and I think the DIM definitely working with the progesterone helped with balancing out the estrogen dominance symptoms that she had. Case study number two, we have a 42-year-old female who came in with symptoms of weight gain, um, irritability, lethargy, mood swings. She had heavy menses as well as recurrent yeast infections. 
So for her, we did a few different things. We did a hormone saliva test, um, did a thyroid profile, micronutrient testing to check for her deficiencies, as well as I wanted to do a pelvic ultrasound to rule out fibroids, or ovarian cysts, et cetera. What we noticed is um, she had urine fibroids that uh, were suspected. She also had hormonal imbalance. She had low thyroid, estrogen dominance. Her nutritional status was depleted. And we had tested her candida levels in her blood. And she did show candida overgrowth in her IgM and IgG levels. So her treatment plan consisted of bioidentical progesterone as well as bioidentical thyroid. Her cortisol levels were OK, um, but we uh, placed her on a yeast-free diet and treated her with some nice statin. And we started a supplement program with microencapsulated DIM with the 300 milligrams per day and um, also some other supplements based on her nutritional deficiencies. Um, she, too, really needed to be on a very um, uh, programmed or, you know, good strict diet to get all the yeast out of her system as well as um, getting her estrogen balanced with the progesterone and the dip. So her outcome was very positive in that her periods were lighter and more regular. She did not have to get a hysterectomy. Um, that's something that she was considering earlier. Um, she had increased energy. Her sleep improved. Her brain fog lifted, she was able to start losing weight, and her candida, or her recurrent yeast infections, resolved um, after a few months of therapy. So that was um, a very nice welcome change for her as well. And so we were able to reverse her estrogen dominance as well as uh, reverse her uh, micronutrient deficiencies and just make her feel overall better. Case study number three, we had a 47-year-old female with recurrent breast pain. She also had unexplained weight gain. She had irritability. She had chronic stress and fatigue. And she was very concerned about her family history of breast and ovarian cancer. She had, um, her mother had had breast cancer and her maternal aunt had had ovarian cancer. So she was very concerned about that. So the tests that she underwent were thyroid profile, a micronutrient testing, um, hormone saliva testing, she also um, had a salivary cortisol diurnal testing. And I also checked a CA125 on her because of her concern with the ovarian. And then, of course, sent her for a mammogram and a pelvic ultrasound to look for um, all the other areas that might be of concern to her. So once all these test results came back, we saw a depleted nutritional status, as we often do. Uh, we saw estrogen dominance. We saw that she had fibrocystic breast changes when I did her exam. Um, as well as she had low thyroid, and she had full-blown adrenal fatigue. So with this program, with, this, with these results, we started her on a program where we initiated weekly IV Myers cocktails, which I find are extremely helpful with my patients with adrenal fatigue. Um, she got placed on bioidentical progesterone, armor thyroid, and definitely a lot of stress management because of her adrenal fatigue, as well as the cortisol levels being um, completely abnormal. She also had microencapsulated DIM at a level of 300, as well as vitamin D supplementation, because she was low in that, and some of the other medical grade supplements that she needed based on her nutritional deficiency. So her result was that she had decreased breast pain. She had much less anxiety about her family history. The mammogram was clean. The pelvic ultrasound was clean. CA125 was normal. And we talked about just education and routine screening. Her thyroid and hormones were balanced, her moods were stable, her stress was reduced, her energy was up, and she was able to lose weight. So she was a happy camper and um, continued her life of just balancing mind, body, and spirit. So those were just some examples of um, patients that we've seen in our practice. And I would say that you know a lot of our patients are just um, different symptoms along those lines and have been really helped with both DIM as well as hormonal balance as well as nutritional balance. So we really do look at the eight steps to wellness approach. But some of the key takeaway points that I'd like to leave you with is that DIM supports healthy 2-hydroxyestrogen production. So it improves that ratio of the 2-hydroxy over 16-hydroxy, which really improves overall health and wellness for patients. It also boosts health by reducing estrogen dominance. It aids in weight management. It supports healthy aging. 
it promotes breast health, and it decreases cancer risk status. Um, I would recommend that every patient be evaluated by, your, uh, by yourself or the clinicians prior to treating with DIM or any other supplement or prescription medication. Um, they need a full evaluation to look at what the causes of their symptoms are, not just looking at the symptoms. And we do know that no toxicity or serious side effects have been reported with supplemental doses of DIM. So I hope that's kind of been able to put everything in perspective for you as far as the full spectrum of overall wellness and overall care for your patients, as well as where DIM plays a very, very big role in at least my practice, as well as I'm sure it could in your practices. So with that being said, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we can certainly open it up for some questions if you want. Shelley, would you like to take over? Yes, thank you, Dr. Shell. That was a very informative presentation, and we do have some questions for you. So okay. I want to remind everyone that if you do have a question, you can go ahead and enter it into the chat um, bar on your GoTo toolbar. Um, the first question that we have for you is, can DIM be used with clients who are currently taking birth control pills? That's a very good question. Um, we don't see that there is a contraindication for that, so yes they can because even with the birth control pills you're getting a lot of synthetic estrogens and those two will metabolize and you want to have a positive metabolite ratio between 2 hydroxy and 4 and 16 hydroxy. So yes, I would say that that should not be a problem. Okay. Um, are there any negative side effects with DIM? Not that we've seen. Like I mentioned in my last slide, we have not seen any toxicity or negative side effects with DIM. Um, in our uh, use of DIM over the last many years. Okay, would you recommend higher dosing for positive history of breast cancer and or positive breast cancer family history? That's a very interesting question as well. It depends on whether you have, um, you want to just, you know, I always tell my patients and other clinicians that more is not necessarily better of anything. So you want to give a good dose of everything. I think that premenopausal women need a slightly higher dose than postmenopausal women because they have more estrogen to work with and they have more chances of estrogen dominance. So um, you want to go give a good solid dose, not necessarily over to overload them with them, but a good solid dose. Okay. But Are I you think you know, what I would say, though, Shelley, is that it is a very important part of my treatment care with those patients. If they do have positive family history, they're definitely going to be on them, if that's okay. right. Um, next question is, are you using DIM to only prevent endometriosis and cysts, or have you clinically seen it decrease the size of lesions or cysts once they have developed, or even eliminate them completely? I've seen all of the above. I've seen that even giving them natural progesterone treatment as well as DIM um, both together really help with um, decreasing the size as well as decreasing the chances and recurrences of ovarian cysts and endometriosis. Okay. Uh, the next question, um, are the doses that you recommended in your case studies, is that for the total bioresponse DIM? Um, including the vitamin E and phosphocholine, or do they rep represent the elemental amount of them? The total. Right, okay. Okay, next question. Um, how are you diagnosing estrogen dominance? Are there standard cutoffs provided by library testing results? That's a great question. Yes, I usually, in my practice, of course, I do two things. Um, I never only diagnose anything based on tests. So I use both the tests as well as their um, symptoms and their clinical presentation. So I look at, uh, we do a thorough, thorough evaluation. So my initial visit with these patients is usually going to be about 45 minutes to an hour. So I do a complete history and evaluation. And uh, so you see a lot of symptoms that are going to um, indicate that they have estrogen dominance. But then the salivary test does have um, the ability to show you total estradiol, total progesterone, as well as the balance or the ratio between estrogen and progesterone. And that needs to be in a certain um, number or a certain value. And if it's below that value, then you know that basically they are estrogen dominant, even according to the test results. Okay. Uh, the next question is, what doses of DIM have you used in males? 
I've used usually about 75 milligrams or one capsule of the bioresponse sim, which will give you about 125. Okay. So that's a good dose for males. Now, one thing that I would say in males, and that's a very good question, because in a lot of my male patients, and I do do a lot of bioidentical testosterone replacement with my um, male population, you'll see a lot of andropause in your male population where their testosterone to estrogen ratio might be off where they're converting a lot to estrogen. So it's really useful in those patients so that they don't convert so much to estrogen and um, that they get better lean muscle mass and they get better energy and they get less irritability and less belly fat because all the estrogen that they might convert to might give them all of that. So if you put them on DIM, that'll actually decrease their um, fat estrogen metabolites and lead to more muscle mass and other things that are beneficial and that's what a lot of men really want to see is the less conversion. Right, right. Um, what about interactions with um, other medications? The only medication that I would caution, one of the medications that I would caution against would be blood thinners. So if somebody is on blood thinners, then you might use caution with that. And um, other than that, there have not been many medications that, um, that I've seen interaction with, but I would use caution with uh, Coumadin or Warfarin. Okay. Um, what lab do you use for urine hormone testing? For my hormone testing, I use the RT lab. Mm -hmm. which I uh, use for most of my saliva testing with hormones as well as my cortisol. Um, and they've served me very well as far as consistency over the last six or seven years. So um, it, it really has been a good lot for me. Okay. Um, what do you recommend as a treatment endpoint, and at what point do you wean patients off them? Say that one more time, Shelley. Um, let's see. What do you recommend as a treatment endpoint, and at what point do you wean patients off, off of DIM, or do you wean them off? I really don't, because I think that if you have a, for example, a premenopausal woman, they're going to have estrogen in their bodies, and the estrogen will metabolize. And you want that metabolite to be a positive metabolite. So as long as the liver is functioning and the metabolites are coming up and you know all of those things, you want the favorable metabolism. For estrogen. Even with the postmenopausal women, you have the metabolism going on there. So I don't, I don't wean people off of them. I think that is one of those um, compounds that my patients will most likely stay on. Okay. Another question about um, estrogen testing. Uh, do you prefer saliva over blood or urine um, for testing estrogen ratios? Yes, I do. I've done it both ways. Um, I've done blood as well as saliva, and it's always served me better to do saliva because of um, consistency and being able to. I use a lot of cream um, in my topical products, topical estrogen and progesterone products, as well as testosterone in my female population. So uh, with that being said, you have a very consistent um, outcome with using saliva levels, and you can actually see it much better. Um, I don't know if you're able to pull this slide up again. Um, we have a question about what were the dosage um, that you recommended for the average woman pre- and post-menopausal? Okay, uh, let's see here. We can try to pull it up here. If you want to go to the next question, I'll right here. Okay. The average dose is about 100 to 200. Premenopausal, so if you look at um, premenopausal, if you look at the, that dose, I usually will use about two of the Douglas DIM products to a day, and the postmenopausal I'll use about one. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, next question. What are the effects of higher doses of, of DIM on hypothyroid patients? Higher doses of DIM on hypothyroid patients? Unless they have autoimmune thyroiditis, um, including Hashimoto's, you really shouldn't see much effect on those okay. patients. Okay. Um, the next question is about males. If you put a male on DIM alone without testosterone, will it increase their testosterone? 
I don't believe it should, but I don't think I can answer that. Um, the next question is, does DIM help with menstrual migraines? DIM helps with everything that can be related to estrogen dominance. So if the menstrual migraines are related to estrogen dominance or are caused by estrogen dominance, then yes, it has the potential for helping for that. But I would also suggest that you might want to use that in conjunction with natural progesterone. Okay. Um, the next question kind of leads into that. Um, oops, sorry, one second. Um, are there any concerns if a healthcare practitioner uses DIM without using progesterone if needed? It just truly depends. I mean, I think it's important to really counsel every patient about all your risks, benefits, and alternatives, all the different alternatives of treatment. If somebody is, um, in your mind, a good candidate for progesterone and DIM both, but they don't want to take the progesterone for whatever reason, I don't see that there's anything wrong with using DIM without progesterone, but I'm a firm believer in doing complete, total, holistic wellness so that you address everything, including uh, metabolism, including hormonal balance, including nutritional balance, including their eating program, exercise, activity, sleep, water, you know, the whole thing. So in our practice, we take a very comprehensive approach. So I think it's important to counsel them about everything. Okay. Uh, let's see. I believe this is, might be the last question, and I can actually answer this. You had referenced this study on why DEM needs to be um, in the microencapsulated form. Um, and you can actually, and someone was wanting to know um, what study this was, and you can go to douglaslaboratories.com and type in DIM, and you can pull up the study by um, just looking at the product data sheet. It's listed on there for you. Okay. Very good. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that, Ms. Shelley. Yes, it was very informative, and thank you again, Dr. Shell. And I'd like to remind um, everyone that um, if you missed some of the webinar or if you'd like to listen to it again, it will be available tomorrow on douglaslabs.com. So thank you again, and please watch for future webinars on douglaslabs.com. Thank you so much.